Good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar, and I just had a, a few minute uh, break in, in between uh, doing stuff. And I thought I'd just answer a question I received uh, via message uh, real quick. I think it's an interesting question. And uh, first of all, I just want to go ahead and talk about the context uh, just so everybody's on the same page as far as what really happens in, in the real world because a lot of of facts and questions and things like that that are presented to you, particularly when you're you're in school, are are from a very linear, inside the box kind of context where um, you know, there there's there's good theory, good physiology to uh, to base these ideas upon, but that's not to say that you necessarily see these these things occur consistently in the in the clinical environment. Uh, but it's still an interesting question. The question was in regards to tracheal deviation, and it's one of the things that we, we check for when we're doing assessments. You, know, you look at the neck, uh, you look at the trachea. Uh, generally, the trachea uh, is midline um, on the neck, and uh, you know that's that's a that's a that's a pertinent uh, finding that you want to you want to find. And and uh, there are things that can cause the trachea to deviate one way or the other. And again, tracheal deviation isn't something that you will necessarily see a whole lot of, but it is something that is talked about quite a bit, uh, particularly when EMTs and paramedics and respiratory therapists and nurses uh, learn about trauma and, and things of that nature. They really hit this this concept of the deviating trachea very hard, uh, but but in reality, it may not be something that you see a whole lot of. Uh, you know, I. Uh, uh, and obviously, this is anecdotal experience. I've, I think I've maybe seen it once or twice in my entire career, and it was actually on um, intubated patients um, with a the, the trauma was not a traditional kind of trauma. It was in re, it was actually related to a central line that had been been in place in uh, the, the subclavian approach. Uh, the pleural uh, cavity had been punctured during a procedure. The patient was mechanically ventilated on positive pressure ventilation and tension pneumothorax developed, uh, significant tension pneumothorax. I haven't really seen that, um, certainly not out in the field and, and not a whole lot in the more conventional types of trauma uh, that I've seen in the clinical environment. But uh, anyway, going back to the question, the question was what, what kinds of pathology cause the tra- trachea or could cause the trachea to deviate in different ways? And, uh, so the way that I kind of, the basic thinking that I go by is anytime you have a, a large collection of air and that air is expanding, that air will push on structures. So I just think of air as it expands and pushes. And typically what will happen is, is if I have, let's say, a large tension uh, developing here, and if, if it develops very quick and it's very, very bad, obviously, this is a late finding. Tracheal deviation is a late finding. It's not a common finding. It's late and indicates a morbid patient. Um, but, uh, and you really should be able to detect these life-threatening problems before you see tracheal deviation. But anyway, so the air, um, expands and it pushes and generally what happens is I have a large collection of air. It's going to push the trachea away. So when I, when we're dealing with large collections of, of air, um, that's going to generally going to push the trachea away from where I have that collection. However, if I have uh, something on the lines of massive atelectasis, where I have large, colla- uh, large, uh, you know, maybe collapse of the alveoli and some fluid building up and so lots of secretions and some big consolidations and masses, large collections and flu- of fluids and things of that nature, um, what you may see, in fact, is just gravity. Actually, you know, if I have a large uh, collection of fluid and I have a patient sitting in it's some sort of uh, low fowlers, fowlers, semi-fowlers kind of position, uh, you know, and if there's enough there, and in theory, you could see the trachea actually get pulled down, the trachea will get tugged, the tracheal tugging, and the trachea may, may shift toward uh, the site of all that, that stuff collecting there. Um, so that's kind of the general rule that you, you can go by, and again, tracheal deviation is something they love to put in the textbooks. And I'm not saying it's an unimportant finding, but um, there are certainly other findings that you should expect um, in some of these thoracic problems. And certainly, if if there's a suspected tension pneumothorax, you should be able to identify that and treat it uh, emergently 
prior to the development of some of these later text, quote-unquote textbook findings. But anyway, that's my take on it. Um, hopefully that cleared that question up uh, for any, uh, the, certainly a person who asked me and um, anybody else who may have wondered. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.